PTC MathCAD 5.0 introduced the chart component as a new tool for creating 2D plots of data, and it got some more enhancements in PTC MathCAD 6.0. Also in Creo Parametric 6.0, all the different chart tools in BMX, Mechanisms, and Creo Simulate started using the chart component as well. So this tool has applications for Creo Parametric users as well. Let me show you how to use it. Here I am in MathCAD Prime 6.0. Let me make this a little bit bigger over here. I started out, I was taking a look at my Philadelphia Eagles. I wanted to figure out if they had a December curse or not. And I wrote a blog post about this for PTC. Then later on, I decided to go back and take the data and present it visually. And so here I have a program that I wrote in PTC MathCAD that basically creates a matrix of the year in the first column and the differential between the Philadelphia Eagles December record and their record from September through November. Let's make a chart of this. So I'm going to scroll down to an empty spot in my worksheet. To create the chart component on the math tab, there is a new icon as of MathCAD Prime 5.0 that allows you to insert the chart component. And I will click on it, and here you see a preview of it. I like it to be as wide as possible. Up at the top here, we have the inputs. So for creating the inputs, you'll just select where you want to create it, and then you can right-click and hold and choose Insert X-Axis Expression. You can also do that from the Chart Component command. So my X-Axis Expression is going to be the first column of that function. Let's type in Differential eagles eagles is the name of my data set and i'm going to use the space bar to select everything and i want the first column operator i happen to know that that is control shift c and i'm using the first column of my data then let's click over here and let's move this down a little bit just so it looks nice and neat and now let's put in our y component of the data Again, I can oops, right click and choose insert my y axis expression. And this is going to be the second column of the same data. Again, I'm using the space bar to highlight everything using the keyboard shortcut of Shift Control C to get to my column operator. And this is going to be the second column. And when I click outside, here we get a preview of the information that the chart component is going to generate for us. And this looks okay, but I want to make some improvements to it. To enter the editing mode, you're going to double click on the chart component. And here we get a nice little dialog box for configuring it. And I'm going to start by zooming in a little bit more so I can see my data. And usually when I am plotting data, I am using either a scatter plot or I'm using the trace style over here of a line. We can also have it with the area option, which is going to fill in the area under the line. But for this particular case, I want to do a bar chart. And I start out doing it's like, okay, I can see you know, my, my area over here. Now we'll go through the different methods of updating the data. And we have our different tabs over here for the values. I'm going to start on the uh, columns information. Right now it's using a column with a weight of 20, which is a little too wide for me. Let's try a weight of 10. And that looks better. I'm going to narrow it down some more. Let's make it 7. That's starting to look better. Let's see. For my fill color, I'm going to use... Nice green. Since I'm doing the Philadelphia Eagles, let's use green for both the fill column color and the column color as well. And so that's starting to look better. I'm getting these rounded corners over there. I don't like them. Let's change the number of pixels for the rounded column down to zero. And now let's start taking a look at the rest of our data. The next thing that pops out to me is on the x-axis, I have the year, which is being shown in scientific notation. Let's go to the x-axis tab. 
Here we have our styles, grid lines, title, and setup. Let's start out with the setup. And I can see here we have the number formatting, which is using a general format. I'm going to change that to a decimal format. And already that looks better. I've got my nice years over here. For the title, I do want an axis title. So I will check the box over here. Right now it's just calling it X axis title. Let's change this to be called year. And you can see all the different controls that you have over it. So right now the location is the center. You could put it at the end on the or end outside. However, which way that you want it. But center looks nice to me. Here we have our different fonts. And these are all the different fonts that you have on your computer. And I am partial to Roboto. And again, you can change the color of the text. Here you have the style, whether you want bold or italics, change the size if you want it to be a little bigger, so forth and so on. Uh, you have controls if you want to have a border around the title, if you want to have a background that is a different color. Again, it's pretty much fully configurable. Let's see, let's go to the next option that I want to change. Let's take a look at the Y axis and for the styles, we have our different tick marks in here. You can specify if you want to have grid lines or not, and whether you have minor tick marks, minor grid lines, all that is configurable. But let's go to the title, and I'm going to change the Y axis to be called differential. And same controls as before that we had for the X axis. And I can scroll down to the font that I want to use. Could use a different font if I wanted. Uh, change the size. Here we have it at a 90 degree angle. If you want it to be zero de degree angle, you can change that as well. So again, full controls over it. Now let's go to the setup. Right now it is going from, looks like about 0.7. Let me click off of it here. 0.7 on the positive side and minus 0.6 on the other side. I don't like that. Let's change that so that it is going to be the same on both sides. To do that from the setup, we can choose that we want to have a user defined range. And let's do a minimum value of minus 0.75 and a maximum value of 0.5. I'm hitting the enter keys. And here you can see the different tick marks that we get. And that's way too many steps. Let me reduce this down. Let's try, what if I do a value of eight? Uh, that's okay, let's try value of six. There we go, that's nice. I'm going up by values of a quarter. And so again, my graph is already starting to look the way that I want it to. Let's go to the first tab over here, and this is for the general formatting. We have our styles tab. And we have our chart background, which is using a solid color. If you wanted to have a different color, you could choose that. So you could make something that really pops over here. And I like how it updates the preview as you hover your mouse over the different colors. Uh, again, you have things like you can specify if you want to have a border around the entire chart. I usually like to do that as well. And again, you can change the color of the border as desired. Let's take a look at the, you can specify if you have a legend. Again, I really don't need a legend in this case over here because this is just the column of the data. Uh, but I do want to have a title. Let's turn that off because if I had multiple plots of data, it would make sense to have a legend. And if you did have a legend, you can choose where it's going to be displayed, whether it's going to be, say, above the chart or you could put it Let's see, what's one that I usually like? Uh, let's see, let's do middle and maybe to the right outside. Again, really nice that you have all these different controls available to you. Let's go to the title over here and put in a chart title. And I'm going to put in Philadelphia Eagles December versus I'll say regular season. It's really the rest of the season, but you get the idea. And right now it's showing up in the top in the center. Let's put it above the chart over here. And again, 
change the font if you want to. Change the font size. Maybe this one I'm going to put bold. Oops, to mix a little wide over there. Let's change it to, there we go. That looks good over here. And so again, you just go through the tabs and figure out how you want different things formatted. Uh, there are some additional tabs that you have over here. So for example, from axes, you can choose if you want to add a second y-axis in here. You know, if you hover over, you can see all the different additional controls that you get in the display of the values. Oh, wow, that looks ugly. Oh, yeah, why would I show that in logarithms uh, scale? And from the chart, you also have some other predefined chart formats. And again, as you hover over them, you can see the preview that you are getting. And one other additional control that you have uh, that was added in MathCAD Prime 6.0 is the ability to, to output this. You can go to the file menu and over here, choose save as image, and let's say I go to my desktop. From the drop down list, you can now put this as a PNG file, JPEG. You got your GIF over here and your bitmaps. What's also nice is you can go directly to PDF and export this to SVG, which is the scalable vector graphics. If you wanted to export this out of PTC MathCAD and then read it into a vector graphics editing program like Inkscape for doing additional editing on it. But let's cancel out of there. I'm happy with the way that my chart looks. Then when I'm done, all I have to do is close out of here and my chart is updated on the sheet. Later on, if you decide that you don't want to see the inputs on there, you just want to see the nice graph on the sheet, you can collapse the area for those different inputs. Now I have my values listed on here, uh, and then I've got my information displayed to me. As I mentioned, we are using the same chart component in PTC MathCAD as we have inside of Creo Parametric. All right, so here I am in Creo Parametric. I've got my Bender robot, and I just made a simple little analysis in here. Let's run the analysis just to generate some data. Now when I go to my measures, I have a simple measure of the position of a component. Here's the result set. If I go to this button in the measure results, I can graph the selected results. And here is the chart tool. So if you're used to the old PTC Pro Graph Tool. Yeah, it was kind of a, a 1990s look interface. Over here on the left, if you click on the leftmost icon, that allows you to show or hide the panel that contains commands for viewing and managing graphs. Well, from here, you can see that we have the same format and setup of controls that we had in PTC MathCAD Prime for setting up our chart components. So it's the same technology that drives both tools in Creo Parametric and PTC MathCAD Prime. I highly recommend that you check them out.